On today's show, we get to talk about that matchup from last night, a pretty huge upset called by someone on this show. It was it was not me. And then it's waiver day. We have some big heavy hitters at the top of the wide receiver and the running back position. Talk about how you strategize, which guys are you going after. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Leave us some comments about how you're doing for the fantasy football season and enjoy the video. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Welcome in. Tuesday, November 15th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Deucers in the building as well. Lots to talk about today, waivers. Big waiver day. Big waiver day. Trade deadlines are coming as well. Uh, some of them, week 10 was the end. Many of them week 11. And, uh, yeah, waivers, trades, setting yourself up for the playoffs. We've got yep. a playoff primer episode tomorrow. We'll be breaking down matchup situations. I have one team that is locked and loaded. Like, it's ready to go. The playoffs, it's it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, probably got the buy, and I need to get to work. I need to start thinking about those those two weeks. And are there swaps of like players Ooh. that um, you know they're they're a match for one another, and they could get done in a trade? And you know, maybe I solve somebody's bye week problem, and I get a better playoff matchup. Those type of maybe you run into said opponent in those weeks with the worst matchup. Now, true. That's a good point. You could be trading directly mm. to your opponent. That's dastardly. Yeah. Yeah. Cunning. Very cunning. Uh, we have NFL news to cover. Quarterback streamers on today's show. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for supporting the show, leaving your reviews over on Apple Podcasts, following us on Spotify, and uh, all of you beautiful people watching me and my glistening jacket on YouTube. Oh, man. You're right. ready for the rain. Well, ready for that push to the playoffs, he's, boys. He's ready for sixth grade. Is that what this was? <laughs> yes. uh, dude, the starter jackets? Yeah. I mean, those were that was the hot ticket when we were kids. I don't know why I remember this, but specifically the Raiders one. There used to be something where if you used like a um like a gas station credit card enough times they'd give you a starter jacket. Do you remember that? You could pick your team Not jacket. The, I, I I remember those like types of giveaways. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it seemed like, you know, the dream. They, they were gold. And uh no, this is this is this is good stuff. How you doing today, Jason? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Actually had Superman. Uh, good. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Thank you. I'm doing very well. Um, yeah, the a good Monday night football game last yes. night. It's nice to have a primetime game that hits. Let me let me read something that I just pulled from the box score from that game last night that I thought okay. was kind of uh, just interesting. Right, um, Taylor Heineke, Jalen Hurts, both completed 17 passes. Right. The uh, so the receiving the cores seventeen catches each. The running game. Philadelphia had twenty rushing attempts. Mm -hmm. The Washington football team forty nine rushing attempts in this game, and they pulled off the upset. The Eagles are no longer undefeated. Yep, a tremendous call. This was your upset of the week, and it was. I mean, that's that's an upset on the road. The Manders uh, coming in with a sub-500 record and taking out the undefeated team, and they... They controlled they, the game. They just dominated the time of possession. The, I mean, I think they ran 50-something plays in the first half. It was... And the Eagles just didn't have the ball, and it wasn't... Like, what the Manders did was not spectacular because you're looking at... Brian Robinson was 3.3 a clip. Antonio Gibson was 3.1. Curtis Samuel had four carries for three yards. Like they were, uh, they just executed on third down, and yes, and yes. then Taylor Heineke just a lot of prayer, a lot of prayers in those 
in those deep passes and his receivers handling business. And, and like, shout out to Taylor Heineke. Terry freaking McLaurin, <laughs> finally, finally, he's so good. It's it's just like DJ Moore. It, it, you're just you've been ripping your hair out for years. Go screaming at the television. This player is good. I know he's good. I've seen him be good. Why don't you pass him the ball? Eight receptions, 128 yards, 11 targets. Fantastic game for him. Yeah, I was uh, Ron Rivera and the the Commanders executed their they game. They commanded. Plan. They did. They commanded the game. Um, and the Eagles committed turnovers. I mean, you had a great play to Quez Watkins down the field, turns into a fumble. You had the obviously the missed call yeah. on the face mask for Dallas Goddard. You had a lot of weird stuff by I the know, refs. Yeah, I mean, I was I was definitely on team that was the right call with really? the Taylor Heineke. I know you both weren't. I know you both had a vested interest in the Eagles getting the ball back. Certainly. But, uh, yeah, I lean to that side. I mean, I, I was looking this morning at the comments from the uh, the referee from the game, um, specifically head and neck area of the quarterback. I think I was that was probably more apparent than even the late hit part. I don't blame the Eagles for trying to make a play right there. It was a bang-bang situation. But it did seem plain to me that it was the right call. Yeah, it was, it, it was the right call. It was so stupid. It's the super dumb. Like, don't hear what I'm not the, saying. The right dumb call? Yes. They, 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 he, he definitely touched him in the head area. Okay, that's a flag. I get it. You don't call that to end again. When, when you have a, a last-second play, I mean, this is all sports. If you're a sports fan, this is not a vested rooting interest in the Eagles. This is you watch basketball, and it's uh, game seven of a finals, and the, you know it's going down to the water. The, you don't call as many fouls. The end of a game in, in you the, know, Hail how many, Mary, the Hail Mary PI. The Hail Mary pass interference is the perfect example. There's pass interference on every single Hail, Hail Mary. They don't call them. you got to let the players play at the end of the game because you don't want the ref deciding the game. On that, they literally were touching him down. Yes, I mean that's my biggest. They problem They were touching it. him down, my, and then you say game over. My biggest problem was, yeah, especially when you see the see it from the back camera, like the side the side angle looks it's it it's not as clear, but from the back, I mean Heineke is scrambling. He does a weird jump one eighty to take the knee, and it looks exactly like a quarterback who has slipped. And fallen, and if you are uh, the defensive lineman, that's what it looked like to me. If if I'm that guy, oh, he fell down. I have to go touch him, or he gets up and he continues and, the play. And, and they just touch. They but didn't, like, oh, they no, didn't tackle him or hit him. Uh, he he went flying like they yeah. hit him. But they he just was in a bad him. position too with his knee underneath him. I yeah. think it was easy to fall backwards quickly. Yeah, Brandon Graham. Is it Brandon Graham? Is that who? correct? Yeah, he he kind of uh, I gave him a lot of credit the interview after the game. Uh, you know, he said he was just trying to kind of touch him down. He said he just took it. He you know took it and said yeah. he's gonna. You could see he he was pulling up. He wasn't trying to smash him. He was just trying to touch a quarterback who had fallen over. So but, the, yeah, let's let's talk fantasy here. Terry McLaurin eight for one twenty eight. He's great. He's on a nine target per game pace over the last month with Taylor Heineken. Who will remain the starter? Yeah. So it, he, as he as long better. as. As long as Heineke is the starter, I think we can have a lot more confidence in Scary Terry. Uh, 26 carries for Brian Robinson. Some beastly runs where he was pulling the defense. Next week, they have Houston. I want to bring this up because delightful. Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson, they're both going to be in play next week against Houston because the team's going to try to run it 50 times. Yeah, this is the waiver wire show. And this morning, after last night's game, I moved Brian Robinson up. He's, he's available on enough waiver wires where... With the matchup next week, goodness gracious. I think he looked the best in this game that he's looked so far coming back from the injury. Miles Sanders, just 12 carries. They did not have the ball enough for him to do significant damage in the offense. A.J. Brown, I saw plenty of box scores from fantasy games yeah. where you needed two points from A.J. Brown. You couldn't get it. You lose on Monday night. I saw. I mean, that is brutal. The brutality of Twitter and fantasy football last night of the, the A.J. Brown, the people who – had one because they had Devontae Smith pull them oh. just over, and then he's credited a fumble on the lateral at, at the end of the, the hook and ladder play trying to make something happen. And he lost. Minus, Didn't he lose he, receiving yards? Yes, he lost like 15 In, in certain sports yards. books, they, did they take it away? Yeah, it's, it's on at, the platforms. He's at 39 yards, 39 which is yards. so dumb. I don't, uh, that's, it's not a pass. If you're throwing it backwards, by definition, that's not a pass. 
I so believe the, the first one. The recovery one, of the fumble is the location of the yeah the, the it was, pass reception or what happened? It was I believe the first pass was not backwards, and that was. Uh, I mean, that's usually how it's scored, right? We were looking this up, ironically, yesterday before we left the studio of, like, how do they score those kind of crazy plays? The first person to touch the ball is either the reception or the carry. Yep. No one else gets a reception or a carry. And then the and then the end of the end result of the play is the total yardage. So, But it, it was, like, not – okay. I mean, <laughs> that's one of those things that's brutal. If you yeah, lost you gotta... on a play like that – or. Or maybe even worse with like the defense the of the Washington. Yeah. I mean, there's just such a wild array of sports happenings in that cockamamie play. Yeah, the the magic, right, of uh, <laughs> yeah. the final play. Uh, I will mention briefly, Jalen Hurts only ran for 28 yards in this ball game. I've had a lot of people on Twitter. It's like, I picked up Justin Fields, but I had Lamar. It was during his bye. I picked up Justin Fields, I got mm. Jalen Hurts. Like... I don't I don't know if you were in the office yesterday Mike you might have been but we were just saying like I think Jason and I were talking about it. like jo it's Josh Allen mm -hmm. and no one else sure than Fields I think you could make the Mahomes argument Oh sure yeah I but but Fields and Mahomes or I'm sorry uh Allen and Mahomes and then I think right now you stay in the flames of Justin Fields above everybody else for I'm 100% this week and I because he gets the Atlanta Falcons and I know he's he did it. Justin Fields did it to to the Patriots. He did it to the the Cowboys, right? Yep. And so it's it's hard to make the argument right now of oh I got a scary matchup coming. You're like yeah, Justin Fields has already had those. And if he's running for a hundred plus yards a game, it doesn't matter. And it, you know I looked at the box scores. I was thinking about making a trade offer for him. You're not going to have sixty plus yard touchdowns every week from Justin Fields. No, you won't. And he's had a you know he's had a couple of those in consecutive weeks where. That has pushed him from 30 points to 50 points in a fantasy league. But I I think the rushing baseline for him is better than Hurts right now. It's better than Lamar's right now. And that's enough for me to want to push the envelope. And, you know, Philly's defense, Baltimore's defense, much better than Chicago's defense. So you talk about needing to score points. Sure. Um, you know, I, I tweeted this morning. I know we've said a lot of junk about the Bears. I feel like I just call it like I see it. I don't I don't have a bias for or against them. They have done an incredible job of catering their offense midseason to a player. You know, first four games of the year, he had two passing touchdowns. Last six games, he's had 10. Justin Fields, as a passer, has been accentuated by the game plan. It's not just he's a great runner. It's he's a better passer now because they've built an offense around his strengths. Yeah, he's a better quarterback. I can't help but think of all the quarterbacks that have been flushed down the toilet because their coaching staff wasn't willing to embrace what makes them good. It's not like Justin Fields looked medium. Before he looked overtly bust bad. Yes. yes, he did. So it makes me wonder about those. You know, Kyler. <laughs> okay, Ky <laughs> Kyler is. You know, he's been an MVP candidate for but the first half of a year before. Like, look at the Lamar Jackson was the last selection in the first round, and I know some teams trade out, but it's basically every single team in the NFL could have selected Lamar Jackson. But you looked at what his skill set was, and it was, well, I don't think I can make that work in the NFL. That's scary. Like the mo you have to completely transform your system and how you run an offense. The Ravens were willing to do it. They have been rewarded. The Bears, I mean, like it's it's incredible what they have done. The the bringing in a new coaching staff. This is not your guy. Like you could have just said, we don't like. You, Justin Fields, we don't think you will turn into a good quarterback. We're going to tank this season. We're going to select a quarterback with a, with a top three pick, and that is it. We will see you later. But they have they had a system at the beginning that did not work, and they have changed it. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very incredible coaching move. I think part of the fear that I would have as a team to embrace this kind of a quarterback style, that's Jalen Hurts, Kaepernick, Cam Newton – is the expiration date on your quarterback's effectiveness. Sure. Because, like, Cam Newton today is 33. He stopped being an effective NFL quarterback at 31, 30, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, good old Matty Ice is out there at 37 still running an offense. I think that's part of the fear is, you know, you're not going to be able to run like a 24-year-old when you're, you know, 34. But, sure. But it, it's unlocking 
better years, right? Like Lamar's years at peak are going to be better than a lot of other quarterbacks. And man, NFL, it's a year to year game. Yep. Uh, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance. Well, 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 the Chargers head coach Brandon Staley says both Keenan Allen and Mike Williams will practice this week, Jason. Oh, that is great news they play for Sunday their practices. Night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're not going to play. <laughs> they play Sunday night against the Chiefs. Oh, come on. I if Look, if I had uh, uh, watch the news, we'll keep you up to date. Listen to the Injury Blitz podcast on Friday for Matthew Betts. But if you could pick up DeAndre Carter and he could be a pivot for you, that would be an option. Yeah, you're saying if you've got Mike Williams or Keenan Allen, yes. pick up DeAndre Carter. He almost scored twice in that game. Wait it out, and you've got a good pivot if they aren't playing. I, I, I like that strategy quite a bit. I still am going to presume that they are not going to play the timeline for Mike Williams. He should not be back yet. It's great if he's back to practice and not back yet and gets back on the expected normal timeline. Uh, the fact that it's Sunday night, though, certainly means you've got to have, if you don't have those late pivot options on Sunday night or Monday night football, you just need to start someone ahead of them Sunday morning. I want to bring up uh, another name, Arizona Cardinals wide receiver Hollywood Brown. I listened sure. to uh, an interview with Cliff Kingsbury, who, uh, again, you know, the timeline for Hollywood was, was going to be quite a while. He says that he has progressed to the point in which it should be looked at as day-to-day. That's the way he described Hollywood Brown. James Conner was day-to-day -day for 20-plus days. The Cardinals' version of a day is very yeah. different. Uh, but a, It's a day on Mercury. Yeah, well, he said day-to-day, -day, and then he said, well, if he's not ready for week 11, um, it'll be soon. And if not soon, it'll be after the bye. Yeah, yes. they're, they're so, week 13. They're bye. week 13. We are heading into week 11 right now. He is eligible. Like, he's missed the four games. So if you're wondering when is he able to come back, they could activate him uh, anytime by rule. Their, their offense could be a very interesting end-of-season offense. You will have five regular season games after the bye, obviously not for fantasy, but you have Hollywood. Rondé Moore is emerging. DeAndre Hopkins has played a big role. They obviously lost Zach Ertz. So um, those players could all have relevance. Cooper Cup diagnosed with a high ankle sprain, and the quote that I have is the prognosis, quote, doesn't look good. Yeah. Likely going to IR. I mean, I watching it happen, if they're saying all that happened was a high ankle sprain, I don't know. That's That seems like a best-case scenario. You knew he was going to be out for a long time, but if he doesn't have an, any actual you know, broken bones, torn anything, and it's just a sprain, I think that's a – that's a pretty good outcome. Even with that, though, he's going to miss quite a bit of yes. time. I, and He's and probably done for the fantasy season. season yeah. yeah, Mark Andrews had a has a really good chance to play Week 11 against the Panthers. Uh, okay. Good old college try. <laughs> they're, they're coming off the bye week. Hopefully he's good with that shoulder. If not, Isaiah likely becomes a good play. Hopefully, if you're the Mark Andrews manager, you yeah. have likely there. And then either way, you got a good tight end play. Zach Ertz out for the season for the Arizona Cardinals. So, Trey McBride, first uh, we'll see. tight end off the board. We'll get an opportunity. Uh, it's not somebody I'm looking at for fantasy. No, I, I think Rondell Moore in the slot is who's going to pick up a lot of those type of targets. Jerry Judy's ankle injury described as minor. His reaction to it on the field described as major by me. Yes. Yeah, by all by everyone who saw it. Yeah. I mean, we all thought done, and so, now he's day-to-day. -day. Uh, we You did also miss a Cardinal who will be – out for the Cardinals for the season is Eno Benjamin, who was waived yesterday. Got his walking papers. Like what? Yeah, from, thank you. From starter to uh, out on the street. I saw a beat reporter. It has to be something that happened. The, the you know the the beat reporter that what he was told was this was there was a an argument related to playing time, but that's just that seems wacky that a player a, a Backup running back who did okay for you. He had, I mean, he had one great game and a few okay games. And then James Conner comes back and he's the guy. And it comes to the coaching staff and says, I want to play more. I mean, maybe. I do he, not believe he had a carry in the last game. Perhaps he was extremely uh, just over the top confrontational about it. I mean, this is completely. Like Brooks when he's like, I want yes. more words on the show. And yes. they were like, Brooks, 
Settle down back Gosh, there. Gosh, man, this ain't your show. But yeah, you get two. Sounds like Aw, me. and yeah, that's it. Those two. Yeah. But the fact that James Conner just returned from a very long injury and you waive the primary backup is I, I look very bizarre. I think suspicious. There's some ego at play, but it, it's oh, similar. Ego, ego Benjamin? <laughs> ego Benjamin. Oh. There is, you know, it's similar to when the Jets were winning and Elijah Moore is saying, give me the ball. And as a coach, I was like, we just won. We just, we just beat, you know, the division mates and you're complaining that you didn't touch the ball enough. You're gone. Uh, the the combination of Eno Benjamin not being there and Zach Ertz not being there with James Conner getting ninety five percent of the snaps or whatever it was it was you know he was basically the dude um, he looks like a really good play going forward until he's in his next entry. Did you guys notice that the Cardinals seem to be done with Robbie Anderson now? Yeah, he went from eighty three percent of snaps to like twelve percent, and AJ Green took over again. <laughs> Yeah, can we what get, a great trade! Can they get those picks back, Robbie? It should have been a um, like a seven day free trial. <laughs> yeah, on Robbie oh, yeah. Anderson, they should yeah. really do free trials. Yeah. yeah, and then if you cancel your subscription before yeah. the trial period ends, you're good. Just <laughs> put them back on a plane. Uh, one more piece of news that's worth a discussion: Forty ers head coach Kyle Shanahan said his goal is for Christian McCaffrey and Elijah Mitchell to have even carries going forward. This, I believe. Yeah. I do. I believe, yeah, I believe it. it too. I, I believe it like Mike McDaniel with Jeff Wilson and, and Raheem Mostert. Elijah Mitchell's a good running back. They're a good running game. It puts Elijah Mitchell into play. Sure. Um, you know, when you talk about do you want to start Najee Harris right now or do you want to start Elijah Mitchell? What decision do you make there? Jalen Warren's taking carries away right. from an offense that's not doing well. Elijah Mitchell will have – maybe he had three chances on the goal line, Kyle? Yeah, yeah. Like three in a row. So – uh, you know, it's just very interesting. Yeah, I, I don't worry too much for Christian McCaffrey. We've talked about this in, in recent days and well, There should be better touches. Yeah, you, you you don't – as much as when we're watching the game, we want every touch to go their way. We don't want our players getting the ball 30 times. Uh, this last game, while Elijah Missile out-carried Christian McCaffrey and had 18 carries, CMC still had 20 opportunities in the game. That is yep. plenty of – of touches and fantasy uh, goodness for CMC. But do you agree that Elijah Mitchell's in play then if he's yeah, he's 20 a, opportunities too? I think he's a flex option um, on on a lot of weeks. The Los Angeles Chargers are a very bad r run defense. That's who they played. So I don't think it'll always be as easy to, you know, give 30 plus carries to your running backs. Um, but in the right matchup, absolutely. Would you rather have Elijah Mitchell on your roster or Jalen Warren? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, Elijah Probably Mitchell. Mitchell. I, I, I Better think, team. Yeah, exactly. You're going with a backup in both situations, so give me the one with more scoring opportunities. All right, that was today's news notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's get into the waivers. Welcome to The Fold, presented by Samsung Galaxy. All right, the week 11 bye weeks, most of my offense, the Dolphins, uh, going on by the Seahawks, the Buccaneers, and the Jags. Let's dive into what wide receivers we're welcoming into the fold for week 11. Uh, at the tippy top of our list are some very kind of exciting, interesting, fun names. Kadarius Tony and Christian Watson, let's start there. Tony is rostered already in 60% of leagues, but Watson in just 17%. Yeah, both of these players are awesome pickups. For the exact same reason. They are young, explosive wide receivers that you can put in your lineup this week. You can pick them up to start them, and they have like the, the same value as if they were a stash, just the true breakout potential on good offenses with good quarterbacks that are in need right now. I mean, I the, both of these players I, I want on all of my rosters. Kadarius, Tony. Ran a route on only 41% of Mahomes' dropbacks last week, but was targeted on 29% of his routes run. Was four for 57 and a touchdown with lots of upside against the Chargers on Sunday night football. Should be a fun one. He also Watson, got two carries. Watson was uh, four for 107 and three. The Watson game is very funny. Uh, we were talking about this in the office of how, I mean, four for 107 and three, that's, that's a breakout game. That's 
top tier. It's fantastic. It's it wins you a week for fantasy football. It earns a player usually more playing time. And yet he still had a bad game. Mm-hmm. Uh he has he had two like two horrific drops and he had one nine route where he was he had his man beat and, and he stopped running. And he he quit on the route because he felt like the ball wasn't coming to him and then where oh there it was over his head. <laughs> But still, four for one hundred seven three is that's that's an absolute must pick up. He was a second round pick. He's a size, speed, just freak off the charts. They, I like that they're going to keep taking shots because if you sure. take if you take a shot, yeah, you're not going to get three touchdowns every game. But if you tell me he's going to get eight targets and a couple of them are high value shots from Aaron Rodgers, I'm in on that. You want it? You hope that he isn't. He doesn't turn into kind of like. When Darius Slayton was breaking out, right? Like you get two right. touchdowns and then you take three weeks off, four weeks off, and you get two touchdowns and you just don't know when to play. It could certainly happen, but the matchup is good against Tennessee. They're 31st in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the wide receiver position, and they do give up big plays to speed. That is what Christian Watson does. One of the things that's been really nice, and Andy, I think you've brought this up on the show before, is that Christian Watson has been injured all throughout the season, right. and every single time that he comes back, he is immediately a starter involved and targeted. That he, like He was their plan. He was the second pick in the second round of the NFL draft, one of the highest draft capital they've ever used on a wide receiver. He's looked the part. First play of the season for them was, right. yeah, they was supposed to be a bomb touchdown. We just haven't seen him healthy. Now that he's back in his first like full healthy game, he he had the highest target percentage of all all games, all wide receivers for the Green Bay Packers this year. No one's had as high of a percentage of targets. They will get Randall Cobb back likely this week. Just something to monitor. Boo! <laughs> what? He's I, got Christian Watson. I do have Christian Oh. Like, he just... Uh, <laughs> wow. Very We're, anti-Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb. Let's Not talk the a, man, just the targets. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. I'm uh, okay. you know, very, very unbiased if both, view. If both are there... Good question. Where are you going? I'm going with Kadarius Tony. Yeah, I'm going to go with the offense that hasn't. I mean, this was the first three touchdown game of the season for Aaron Rodgers. It's been a tremendous struggle for them. Um, I I think there's going to be more total targets uh, heading Tony's way in the future. Juju's in concussion protocol. Uh, Hardman's been injured, so I lean the Tony direction. Uh, just for I- this year. Sure, I I lean the Tony direction slightly as well, but he's he's not as available. But Christian Watson, if he is there. At this point of the season, I'm going pretty hard in the paint after him. What does that mean? I mean, like, if if you're looking at – if you only have two stable wide receivers, I mean, at this point, probably the rest of my fab. Okay. Here's a player I really am interested in at this point, Paris Campbell. <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> Jason. No, no, I get it. Oh, man. I, re- I really am. Like, I'm interested in the – like I, I like him better than than Michael Pittman moving forward. He's had three top eleven finishes in the last five games. He scored in three of the last five games. He's just very interesting in what Matt Ryan and this offense wants to do, and he's twenty seven percent rostered. Now, do I want him? You know, he's playing Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Dallas the next three weeks. So when you look at buying into Jonathan Taylor, when you look at buying into Campbell or or, or taking a gamble on Pittman, those are Three kind of difficult matchups coming up, but Paris Campbell, somebody that can plug a hole immediately. You have a bye week. You don't have Waddle. Uh, you don't have Lockett. You don't have Metcalf. Like there's a lot of missing wideouts this week, and and I'm interested in Campbell. Yeah, I I completely agree. And and even though it's a not a great matchup against the Eagles, it's one of those types of players where when the pass rush comes through, there's no Naeem Hines anymore. Matt Ryan's going to be looking to get the ball out quickly to Paris Campbell. I I would not go as far as to say I would rather have him over Pittman. Pittman had nine targets this last game, but I think he's he's right there in the pecking order and uh, is is a wonderful pickup who's available in the vast majority of leagues. All right, some other names worth mentioning. Uh, some of them kind of qualify as a stash candidate. You know, Beckham is supposed to choose a team. He's about 50% rostered. Traylon Burks would be a stash and not someone you sure. can play yet, but just coming back off of injury, a the rookie, target share. rookie wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, he was only on the field about 50% of the snaps. So you could have him 
be really good the rest of this year. Certainly a good stash pickup, but not someone you're going to play. And then uh, we mentioned DeAndre Carter. If you need a spot start this week, DeAndre Carter could be in play for you. Uh, There's quite a few spot starts. Darius Slayton. Yeah. I, I think it's a really good spot start. Detroit. He had 95 yards and a touchdown sure. this last week. He's going to be playing uh, against Detroit. So, I mean, no one wants to play Darius Slayton, but you can, and it can work out pretty well. Uh, ben Skronik. Yeah, man. Deep, deep leagues. 98% of the snaps. It was two receptions for 14 yards, but it was seven targets, and it was the backup quarterback. Uh, Matthew Stafford will be back. It was concussion protocol, so it's not like a long-term injury for him. And with Cooper Cup not on the field, this guy is going to be out there. He was already a, essentially a high 80% of the snaps player and was was getting more action than, than Allen Robinson. Van Jefferson still returning from the injury for – he, I don't think he's going to. He's not going to turn into Cooper Cup by not anywhere close. But he's going to get targets for a team that just lost. What? Well, I mean, what was Cooper Cup's target share on the season? Like one hundred and ten percent. Like all of the targets. Those you like to, him more than Van Jefferson? Oh yeah. yeah, he's my favorite Ram pickup. Do you like you like him more than Allen Robinson? If you had a choice on waiver wire between those two, if if somehow Allen Robinson was there, I would probably take him just because of the the money and the touchdown upside, but Skoranek I don't think is that far behind him. Let me ask you a question about some drop candidates that have come up on Twitter. Wandale Robinson. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you can drop him. Brandon Cooks, where, you know, Nico Collins is on our list of uh, all the waiver rankings, by the way, on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. But uh, Nico Collins is, is, you know, 10 targets, 5 for 49, 21% target per route run on the season. Is Brandon Cooks somebody you just kind of, you're still holding on to? After you came back, I'm still holding on to Brandon Cooks. Yes. DJ Moore. Now that uh, Baker's back, I'm still holding <sighs> yeah, on to DJ Moore as well. Don't drop him yet. But, yeah, I agree. But uh oh. <laughs> but uh, but uh oh. And don't they have a Baltimore matchup this week? Yeah. Mm, delightful. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back with the running backs. All right, Foot Clan, let's dive into what running backs we are welcoming into the fold for the upcoming week. Uh, it's tough because I think the, the, the true biggest long-term upside running back pickups, if they're out there, are both on buy. Mm -hmm. um, we had reports this morning that Rashad White, after the breakout performance, is likely to maintain the starting role in the Tampa offense, which is a valuable role. He's 22 for 105, heading on by. Jeff Wilson, 17 for 119 and a touchdown. Big game, part two. Two for two in Miami for Jeff Wilson. Also on the bye, but comes out with Houston and is rostered in 75% of leagues already. Yeah, those guys are probably rostered, uh, but you need to check your leagues. And because they're going into the bye, a lot of times players will go to look at available players and it's sorted by projections. They will be projected for exactly zero points. So you need to look for those players and see if they're available. They should be rostered in 100% of leagues, not 55% of leagues. So thank you. 55! So, yeah, uh, th those are the first pickups. And unless I absolutely have to start someone off of waivers, I would rather take the bye week, spend to get one of those two guys over um, grabbing one of these next names. Now, I, I will – Throw Brian Robinson into the mix is maybe competing for that top spot, though, because Houston, Atlanta, the next two weeks, Washington is a team on the rise, and his workload is, you know, likely to be very high. Houston's given up the most fantasy points to a running back, uh, to the running back position by a wide margin. So, like you said, if you need a spot start this week, um, if you are kind of on the fence between needing that versus waiting another week, I think Brian Robinson could do. Do you well this week? Yeah, he could do both for sure. I, you know, we're we've got our quarterback streamers going uh, here in a little bit, and I thought about Taylor Heineke. He looked pretty good. He's playing against Houston, but the reality is, when teams play against Houston, they just don't throw the ball much because you don't need to. You can run all day on Houston, and that's what they're going to do with Brian Robinson. That's what they do did against the Eagles and got a win. I mean, Brian Robinson's going to have more than twenty carries against one of the worst run defenses in modern day memory yeah and and please monitor the situation with the ankle for uh gibson. antonio gibson who yep. seems to be fine but uh 
sometimes you play on it and then you end up limited at practice. Isaiah Pacheco, yep. 16 for 82. Seems like you could have a breakout performance on the way on Sunday night football in prime time, which means if you're going to get him, this week is a lot better week to do it than next week. He's only 33% rostered. And uh, I, Clyde edwards alaire has been kind of phased out of this offense, at least this past week. I think Pacheco is actually, you know, from a value perspective, maybe your best pickup at running back. I've I've been more and more uninterested lately in the Chiefs' backfield because whenever you have a three-headed rotation, it's just difficult, especially when most of the touchdowns for the team just go in the passing game. You split that three ways, really difficult, even with a great offense. But Clyde was done. I mean, he got four snaps yeah. on the game. This is a two headed backfield and Isaiah Pacheco is now the starter he had 16 carries for 82 yards that was great now if you look at the final box score you're like well that's like that's not that many fantasy points that he put up last week but they gave him and, and he fumbled he, he lost a fumble so I think he finished with like six fantasy points it's really really bad but he came back in after the fumble mm -hmm. and was just get you know he's the guy now the Chargers are a bad run defense. We just brought that up a minute ago. That's the matchup. I think he's going to be a, a really good play this week. Yeah, I agree. And my only fear with Pacheco is just that if he – this team is smart enough to where if he's not succeeding, like if he's not playing well, they'll make further pivots. Clyde could get more time, could be McKinnon. But as long as he plays well, he, he will have the opportunity. McKinnon is also a fine pickup. Eight um, targets. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, we talk every week. It used to be J.D. McKissick as the, you know, smash glass. Um, to, PPR back. In yeah. case of an emergency. McKinnon is the pass catching back for this team. And now that it's a two-headed rotation, if you need a spot start, you could throw him in there. And no juju. So I think part of what made McKinnon more effective in that game was you saw him. It wasn't just out of the backfield. It was, you know, in the – short area in front of Patrick Mahomes where Juju had been. Other names, Gus Edwards coming off the bye. Yeah, it's coming off the bye, coming off of the hamstring injury. I think that Gus Edwards needs to be rostered. The The difficult part is can you immediately play him? Uh, I mean, one, we haven't gotten the, the all clear from the Ravens because they didn't have to tell us anything over the bye week. But I would expect that he uh, he would be back. But Kenyon Drake, in the couple games where he's been the guy, Kenyon Drake has looked very good for this team. But week seven, when Gus was finally activated, he was right into the leader of the committee of the of the backfield. He got the two touchdowns. The next week, he had 11 for 65. Uh, it, I mean, it was a committee, but he looked good again on 21% of the snaps, 11 for 65. That's, that, that's a good pace to be on, but then unfortunately hurts the hamstring. Where are you guys with his plug and play ability because uh, uh, like you got to pick him up but can you actually rely on him versus Carolina this week yeah uh, I Carolina's run defense has been surprisingly bad this year and it's going to be a, a matter of practice reports you're not going to know how he practices this week when you put in your waiver claims tonight right. so you just make a waiver but, claim because he should be picked up and is if he he's picking you up oh yeah Gus bus <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna wait a week I think they're gonna share it I think okay. they're gonna share the load this week well I think they're gonna share It'll be a timeshare the rest of the season. It's just, does he get the high-value touches near the goal line? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's worth the pickup for sure. He's he's rostered in over 50%. Some stash candidates at running back in the lower the rostered season. percentage numbers. Uh, Isaiah Spiller, 15% rostered. Kenny Gainwell. Look, you're, look, these are in case of injury. Samaj P. Ryan in Cincinnati. And then uh, Madison is about 50-50 on uh, roster percentage, and you know Dalvin Cook's injury history. And then Kyron Williams. What do we think about Kyron's opportunities? If this team – here's – let me make the case for Kyron Williams. This sure. is the rookie running back for the Los Angeles Rams. Thank you. Who who did play um, more snaps than Cam Akers. Um, Akers only had 15% in the entire game. It was by far Daryl Henderson as the snap leader. My case for Kyron Williams is why not? <laughs> and I'm speaking on behalf of Sean McVay. Sure. This team, they're circling the drain. Uh, Cam Akers is not your future at running back. No. Daryl Henderson's not your future at running back. So I would imagine over the back half of the year, 
as a team that's likely not competing for a playoff spot, Kyron will get opportunities and could be a little bit sneaky in terms of value. I, I like the fact that he was catching passes in this game. He's three for 30. Uh, I just think he's worth a glance. I don't think yeah. he's, you know, he's nobody you can start right now. I, I would agree with that. Uh, the last name, uh, we, we've mentioned his name in passing, uh, but Jalen Warren is another good backup. He's more and more involved. Andy, you had such a good comp when we were watching uh, this game. You saw a lot of Austin Eckler in him, and as soon as you said that, I mean, I, I could see exactly what you're talking about because Eckler's a very unique style of runner. Uh, you know, the, the size. Kind of, yeah, the, the size and the legs that uh, – he can make a cut and get hit and keep going forward. And that's, you know, a fellow undrafted uh, rookie free agent, Jalen Warren, should be should definitely be rostered. And, you know, should something happen to Najee, who's already been struggling with the foot injury over the course of the season, maybe he'll get a, a bigger opportunity. And even in dynasty leagues, uh, he, has, he has played his way to more relevance on the field. And I do think that he... He looks like a really good player. He is. Uh, they're both 5'8", Austin Eckler and Jalen Warren. Warren's actually listed at 16 pounds heavier than Austin Eckler and both undrafted. So kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Can Let's, you drop Clyde Edwards a layer? Oh, I think yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, I would I would do it. D this, Even if I, I didn't mean, need anybody <laughs> and I wanted a blank spot on my bench, I would. How wild yep. is that, Clyde? You know, I, I I know it was it was obvious, and it, we weren't the only ones saying this over the first handful of weeks. It's like trade Clyde. It's it's hollow. It's touchdowns. But the first month of this season, he was he was the running back six, ten, seventeen, and eight. Three of his four weeks as a top ten fantasy running back, and now without being injured, yeah. at all, not <laughs> once this whole season is droppable. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. All right, let's welcome some tight ends into the fold. Right now, Tyler Higby tops the list. He's rostered in a lot of leagues, but if he isn't, J Mike just brought it up, the, the case for Ben Skoranek, and, yep. and that case exists for Tyler Higby. Eight targets against Arizona. He is very much Mr. Necessary for this offense. When they are shorthanded, he becomes a high-value option. They have a bad offensive line. He is an emergency valve. And Tyler Higby could be a PPR relevant player with the absence of Cooper Cup. They they designed plays for him. There's there's not a lot of tight ends that get a designed tight end screen at least once a week. So yeah, he, I get it. He's not on your your he's not on your waivers, but for some people he might be there. Yeah, and if you want to get there fast and then take it <laughs> slow, Cole Camo, Cole Komet, uh look, two touchdowns two weeks ago, two yeah. touchdowns last week. Oh, I'm not saying, but against the matchup against Atlanta, he is more involved in the passing game. He's available in half the leagues out there. Cole Komet seems like someone that you could pick up and start if you need to throw someone in your lineup. Yeah, and you're not, I mean, maybe you'll get two a week, but if you don't, be encouraged by six targets and seven targets the last two weeks. Yes. Uh, but watch the injury report because he was a little banged up at the end of the game. Other uh, kind of uh, break glass options at tight end, Foster Moreau. Yep. 31% rostered. Of the Las Vegas Raiders. We're back, back. Up for Mr. IR Darren Waller. We're we're back to the island. Uh we we haven't been here in in many years. It's overgrown. Yeah, the uh, we need we need some uh build a shelter. We need some equipment. But uh the island of Foster Moreau always relevant around the goal line without Darren Waller. So yeah, it's 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 a tough it's tough in the tight end streets. Yeah. Jason, you asked yesterday in the office. He said, uh, and we should ask Mike because who's the number three tight end in fantasy? Who would you want the most outside of Kelsey Andrews? Because this is the question we were kind of walking through, right? And um, I mean, it's probably Goddard. Okay, Goddard that was, was one of about five names that we <laughs> brought up. It's like probably Dallas Goddard, who. Just, I mean, Goddard, twenty-two well, yards short of uh, yeah. of a ten legger over <laughs> Mike here. Mike had a monster parlay that, uh, you know, should have told you guys not to hit him so late in the play. Yeah. Um. Uh, hey, hey, ref, he got face masked. Dalton yeah. Schultz, could he be the number three? He rest could, of the season, absolutely. he could. He's with his. He doesn't have the week to week upside for me that Goddard has. He's, he's safe. He's sure. like a top six play. Like Kittle, Kittle, Goddard. Yeah, uh, Schultz, 
Hawkinson. They're all like in the mix for sure. that yeah, number yeah, yeah. three spot. That, yeah, I get the it. point here is outside of Kelsey and Andrews, there's a, a Grand Canyon to relevance. <laughs> to the next tier. Yeah. It's true. Uh, I don't have any other names I want to mention at tight end. You know, the world wants to know, should they drop Kyle Pitts? He's the most brutal situation, obviously, in fantasy. He has the – Kyle, that number, that metric you gave me yesterday, is it the most uncatchable targets in all of football? The most off-target percentage. Just 30% of his targets are off-target. And this is, a, this is a tight end and a player and a freak athlete with the biggest wingspan at the tight end position in the history of football – and you can still throw him the ball off target. Like, that seems shocking, and yet is the reality. Kyle Pitts is not a reliable start in any way, shape, and form. You will always have a chance at the kind of play that Foster Moreau won't give you, which would be like, they take a deep shot, he comes up with one that's right. on target, and it's a 74-yard touchdown. That won't happen with a number of these guys, but you're, you're really just like rolling the dice, and you're, it's against you. It is so easy for a tight end to be top 12. It does not take much because we just brought it up. There aren't a lot of good tight ends. And Kyle Pitts, we're heading into week 11. There's been two times on the season he's been in the top 12. Oh, my goodness. I mean, there's been half of his games have been outside like the top 30. <laughs> like, you, just complete irrelevant. You're much, much better off playing, and I. this is just disgusting, but playing like somebody like Evan Ingram who – you know, there's end zone shots to him, design plays for him. He's still athletic. He could still break a big play. And um, good old Schmevin. Schmevin Schmingrum. Yeah, I would never tell anybody <laughs> I'm sorry, Nevin Ingram. It would be Schmevin Schmingrum. Um, Just and put I, some glasses on him. Look, I, I didn't see him in our list because I don't know what his roster percentage is right now, but where's Greg D on the roster percentage? Because last week, um, he was on the field the whole time. It didn't go well, but if Jerry Judy's limited, he still could have bigger opportunities. And the Raiders matchup is pretty sixty six percent. Yeah, he's worth a mention. Absolutely, right? yes. What team defenses are we welcoming into the fold this week, gentlemen? So the uh, there's there's a couple interesting ones. The Bengals are coming off their bye week, so they are pretty available. Uh, rostered only nineteen percent, but they get Pittsburgh and that offense. I mean, as, as excited as you are for the target distribution going up for Pickens and for the Muth, they're not good. So the, the Cincinnati can handle that, and they get fo they get to follow that up with Tennessee. Which, if you stop Derrick Henry, which the Bengals have a good run defense, then there's nothing they can do against you either. the The Washington defense is by far my favorite pickup, and okay. they're super available. Chase Young might make it back for next week. I, I even if I he love doesn't, I mean, held Chicago to seven points, held Green Bay to twenty one, held held Indianapolis to sixteen. Uh, Minnesota to 20, and then last night against Philadelphia was a number two D on the week. Like, sure. And Houston is just this delightful floor when you play against them. That's why I like the Giants last week. Yeah, there's also two games being played this week that I am happy to have either defense on either side. The Patriots against the Jets, Belichick against Zach Wilson. I'm, uh, heck yeah, man. <laughs> but also... Uh, the Patriots' offense doesn't seem that scary to me. The Jets' defense has been playing great. They're coming off a bye. I'd be okay with the Jets' side of the ball. And then the Rams' Saints. Sure. Those are two offenses that just are so good at throwing touchdowns to the other team. They are so good at it. And, you know, if it's you want to. It's just the season of giving, Jason. <laughs> right. <laughs> this game, it's funny because you could have two bad offenses, two good defenses, and I'm not sure I would bet the under because defenses can do some scoring in this game. Both of unders are beneath 40 points as well in those games. Yeah, that's I mean, uh, disgusting, but that's great for playing your DST. All right, that was Welcome to the Fold presented by Samsung Galaxy. The Galaxy Z Fold 4 makes multitasking easy. All these waiver wire pickups. Use it to check out the player rankings as well. Watch highlights, view trade targets. You can do it all at once. Improve your roster. Visit Samsung.com. To learn more. Full stream ahead. It's, uh, it's a little uh, slim. It is. I, I had the river is not not flowing. Mike's stream of the week is the one that jumped out beyond 100%. all the rest. So I'm going to let you lead the way, all Mike, because right. I'd rather you say these words at the part of the show before people disconnect. <laughs> and then if you want to hang around for Jason and I's. Um, Feel free. It's Daniel Jones. Uh, he's been 
fine. He's had some some big games here and there. Quarterback 16 on the year. QB 13 last week. Okay, get the to the Y. Get to the Y. He's playing the Detroit Thank Lions. Thank you very much. He's averaging nearly eight rushing attempts per game. The Lions dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points to the quarterback position, allowing the highest yards per attempt. We mentioned Slayton as a possible upside uh, 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 bye week fill in at the wide receiver position. Jones should be f- should be perfectly fine this week. I'm going. I'm just going to add that Daniel Jones is one of those rare quarterbacks that is not good, not good for fantasy, but has explosions. He really, you know, he he's one of the quarterbacks that can put up 30 points because he can have a 60 yard rushing touchdown or a 70 yard Darius Slayton bomb touchdown. So I, I do like him quite a bit for the matchup this week. I am going to uh, roll the dice with Jimmy Garoppolo as my streaming candidate this week. It is 100% about the matchup. Uh, the Cardinals have been the best matchup for quarterbacks for the last three weeks. You saw Andy Dalton in a game that they lost. This has been the enigma of the Cardinals' defense. They have actually been one of the best fantasy defenses each and every week, and they should have been even better last week. The number five on the year right now, they had a touchdown straight up stolen from them by the referee blowing the whistle too soon. I don't know if you saw J.J. Watt yes. actually paid out a bet to somebody that lost to parlay because of not having a defensive score. Um, but the Cardinals have a way of doing what they did to Andy Dalton, giving up a huge fantasy day and yet intercepting the ball and doing things on defense. Jimmy G, Arizona, it's in Mexico City. Jason, I know yesterday you were saying the disrespect of the Cardinals at home being eight-and-a-half-point favorites or underdogs. It's because they're not at home. Mm. Uh, they're in Mexico City. And I think Arizona, giving up that near 70% completion rate, Byron Murphy didn't play last week. Jimmy G is interesting. I know he prefers not to throw any touchdowns, but if if things go against his plan, you could end up with a couple. And my stream of the week. Oh. Well, let's start off with a great, <laughs> a great tweet from uh, at Paul Himbo, just for some context oh, here. Oh, baby. Patrick Mahomes is the NFL's all-time leader in passer rating at 105.8. The league has a 107 passer rating against the Raiders this season. So, yes, I'm going dangerous. I'm going danger <laughs> witch. I'm going Russell Wilson. As my stream of the week. Limited. He only he's been so bad. He only has one top twelve performance on the entire season. And it was against these Vegas Raiders. He was the quarterback three. The Broncos put up the season high in points. This is a matchup that's exploitable. And I know you've got questions about Jerry Judy, but there are enough weapons here with with Sutton, with Greg Dulcich. Uh, to be able to get the job done. I mean, you saw a broken play 50-yard touchdown last week from Russ. That can happen against the Raiders on any play. I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I was sitting, Mike had claimed Daniel Jones, and I'm staring at our stream finder tool from the website, and Russ jumps out, right? Like a ju- the, the Vegas matchup jumps out. I just didn't have the courage. I, I didn't have the courage to do it. I also looked at this game and thought about naming the Raiders as an upset, but, man, that Denver defense is just too – Good. I my biggest worry would be this being a sixteen to thirteen Denver victory or something of that nature. That's but how Denver likes to do it. I did borrow Mike's steel underpants. I hseed them out. Yeah. Okay. Well that's important. Yeah, very important. Don't want to reuse those Just immediately. A little, a little Febreze. They're good to go. I left that in the Arizona sun. <laughs> Just bake it out. <laughs> Real rusty. Yeah. Uh no, steel doesn't rust. No, right? it does not. That's the best part. <laughs> that's the best part. The, yeah. So you can pee in them, and there's no rust risk. That's that amazing. Is, that is correct. Yeah. Well, that's a good way to end the show, <laughs> as always. Um, all right, thanks for joining us. Ride or die tomorrow. Playoff primer, Thursday night preview. Lots going on. Check out our fantasy football community. 31,000 strong at jointhefoot.com. It's the best way to play fantasy football with other people tilting their faces off just yeah. like you. Hey, good luck with your waivers, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.